Could these be my dream chisels? Nothing beats vintage forged steel. I am personally after a bevel edged chisel uh, with a 25 degree uh, angle on the tip so that it's for pairing rather than beating its way through the wood. It's all about the steel. It is all about how it keeps its edge. It is all about how long it will last in daily use. And most modern chisels these days, they just don't have it. When you are taking a piece of, of, uh, of, of iron and forging it, you get better metal. We've got this chisel here, which has a a socket, so the handle, instead of the, the blade going into the handle, which if you whack it really hard could potentially split, the handle goes into the socket and the whole thing is more solid. We've got leather on the end here, so when you smack it really hard, it can take the blow. And, and uh, I have got four of these. I want to restore them. Uh, the sockets are generally okay. This one's been glued together with some sort of really nasty glue. I don't know what's happening on there. I need to clean them up a little bit, but uh, mainly regrind, sharpen, flatten, and uh, get them workable. And we'll see what happens from there. Burn it. Perfect! <laughs> That's a, a little bit off square. Shall we say a lot? <laughs> the Robert Sorby Pro Edge is my favorite machine for grinding and sharpening tools, it, bar none. This isn't sponsored, it's just my. No, it, this is what I use. Uh, and this is one of the reasons. So I've currently got the table set at 90 degrees, but I want it at 25. All of these holes here have got a set angle, that locks in there, that locks off, and that is 25. And I've got a cheat sheet on the front telling me what angle is what. I actually need to be 90 degrees, and I'm gonna just gently grind the end flat. The big problem with this machine is that it heats up the chisels as you go. I need a pot of water to cool them down, and if you're doing multiple tools, then that works even better. They'll just sit there for a couple of minutes in between each tool as you do each each process. On we go. These are actually all looking pretty cool though, but I do need to get this square for now. There are guides, I've got a, a little plate that would sit in this section here and act as a guide to keep everything nice and square. I personally uh, just do it by eye and by feel. Time to put the ice tunes in. Crimson 10, get yourself a tenner off. Maybe there. Nearly there. The closer you get to the edge, uh, the the finer it is, and the more likely you are to uh, to burn the thing. Yeah, be careful. We do not want to remove the temper of the steel. It is the whole point of doing what we're doing. I have set my 20 degree bevel on all four of them. I am sure that the uh, the edges of the chisel are, are, are all nice and hard and good to go. 
progress. We also still need to do a little bit of work on tidying up the, uh, the handles, etc. Of course, I mean, check this out. Every single vintage tool, it seems, comes with its own smattering of white paint. Okay, just a little bit of sandpaper, 240 grit, just to even out the uh, scrapes and they'll essentially be invisible. So it's got this horrible sort of soft glue in the handle. I'm gonna get rid of that. I've lost count of how many times in my average general day I end up needing to use my leather map. Just look at that. Okay, uh, so let's just leave that there to chill out. Okay, so that's feeling a lot better now. That feels a lot better now. It's always fun using uh, one of the tools you're trying to restore to restore its uh, brethren. I'm just going to use some thick black super glue. Now this is gap filling super glue. And that's fine. Wipe the excess glue off. And we're good to go. All right, so I've got some blonde shellac that I've mixed up uh, myself. And this is a really good way of finishing vintage tools and of restoring them and, and cleaning them but keeping that vintage feel. You don't want to sand these handles back uh, to, to raw wood. It just loses the whole feel of it. So even the areas where I've just sanded, so that's, have a look at them. If you didn't know it was there, that whole area is almost invisible. Fun times, eh? All right, you beautiful people, I am back with this video that you never left, but I did. Hmm. Weird. The whole workshop has changed. I have built an extension to the workshop. I've got more tools out. I've even found another one of these and it was the next size down. Missing the, the leather bolstery bits, but uh, I'm sure we can sort something out to do with that. Where there were four, there are now five chisels. We need to finish the sharpening process, which really is just a case of uh, hitting it on the stones. Shapton. I love these stones, mind-blowing nickel. And we've got 500, 2000, 8000, and I've got the 16,000 one as well, although I find that a little bit superfluous. I tend to go to the strop instead of that. You don't need very much water to get these going, and that's one of the beautiful things. So what I'm doing is 500 grit, 2000 grit, then 8000 grit on the stones, and I'm gonna go on to a, a, a leather strop at that point but uh, it's important to sharpen both sides, to flatten both edges. Uh, essentially, I'm flattening the back of the chisel and then I'll flip it over and I'll polish the bevel and uh, that will turn a burr over. And every time that burr breaks off, we get a little bit sharper. If you just do one side and go all the way through to 8,000 and then do the other side and go all the way through, you won't have quite as effective a well, it just won't be quite as sharp. Okay, get in there. Okay, so we've gone through the grits on the stones and these things are sharper than the average chisel already. I'm gonna hit him on this strop with a little bit of chrome polish. This is autosol metal polish. Don't push too hard. The leather has given it. 
if you push too hard, the leather is going to be curved in and you're going to be rounding over the edges. We're putting a small amount of pressure on multiple times and that's just going to, well, buff things out one final time. This is loose. You just see it goes all the way along the edge there. I'm happy. You don't have to hold it on the workbench either. You can just uh, freehand it, although this is a little bit more dangerous. So I can shave. <laughs> oh, that's pretty. <laughs> that's cool. I'm shaving tiny little bits off the edge of this. I've only got four more to do, and then we've got to fix the end of the other one. Bring it on. Oh my gosh, crimsonguitars.com, uh, there's a massive summer sale on August 2022, and the same holds true for vintagetoolshop.com. There's a sale this month, um, money off all 8,000 or so tools that are on that website. So guitar building tools, vintage tools, fill your boots. Nice. This is a little bit long. We might as well save the brush. It's also a tad, a tad tight. Well, looky here, 24 millimeters. That's a better idea. Pretty sharp enough, to run. I love old tools. I absolutely love old tools. I get a kick out of restoring them. I get a kick out of using them. People have actually in the past told me that, and I think they might be right, I build guitars simply as an excuse to, to use tools. Uh, and one of the reasons is probably the guitars themselves are tools. Sharp tools or even better than just tool tools. What am I saying? I've not had enough coffee today. Now, the reason I've chosen these, one, old marbles, uh, steel, incredibly hard, very hard wearing, and uh, it's just so much better than pretty much anything I've tried that's new made uh, on the market today. Secondly, we've got this uh, ferrule or socket, sorry. Um, so the handle goes into the steel rather than vice versa, which means we're not gonna get split handles, etc. And on top of that, you've got this leather here. It's a little bit more gentle on my beautiful 
uh, carvers, manatees of uh, BC Woodworks, and the whole thing is just a little bit more tactile. I prefer a slightly shorter chisel, I prefer a slightly shorter handle, and you know, it's always nice when things match. Let's get that stained. So these other ones are all dark, this is a little bit too light, so uh, yeah, crimson, black, spirit based stain. This is probably overkill, but hey. Finally, some shellac. Once that has dried, just a little bit of buff, it's gonna satin down with use over time. But at this point, I'm really happy. I've got a set of chisels and I've got the beginnings of a collection because uh, I'm sure there's a few even narrower and maybe a few wider that I have yet to find. So, well, with vintage tools, it's always about the treasure hunt as well. Uh, so, here we go. Thank you for watching. Click like, subscribe, go and restore a tool of your own and uh, check out VintageToolShop.com and CrimsonGuitars.com. There's a sale on this month as well. Catch you on the flip side.